everybody? What do you think about this statement? Winning is everything. Winning's everything. Do you think that? Winning is everything? Vince Lombardi famously said, though he was quoting another coach, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. The great Jackie Robinson uh, once was talking about his approach to the game, and he said, all I ever wanted to do was finish first. I just wanted to win. The longtime Yankee owner, George Steinbrenner, is quoted as saying, winning is the most important thing in life after breathing. So, so breathing first and then winning is, is uh, the most important thing. What do you think about that? How does that sit with you? Winning's everything. Regardless of where you land, I, I want to suggest that from a spiritual perspective, it is. When it pertains to the things of eternity, when it pertains to the things of your eternity, winning is everything. But if I'm honest, I try to be honest, a lot of the time I feel like I'm losing. Do you feel like you're losing? I want to win, but, but there are times at home when I know I've blown it. There are times in my friendships when I know, ah, I shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have said it that way. Or even in my prayer life where it's been days since I've spent time with God. Or even in those things that may not seem to be the most important things, like when I leave the water running and it floods our front flower bed with the sprinkler. Or when I, that new recipe is a dud. And I think to myself, why? why? Hey, cereal's for dinner tonight. I don't even know why I try. Or when I look in the mirror, I want to win. But sometimes I feel like I'm losing. And if any of that sounds familiar to you, if you've ever felt like you're losing, and I, I feel like I speak for everyone when I say, well, yes, that's, that's us, then today's dose of confidence is from 1 John is for you. We've been in this series all summer long in 1 John, and each week we've been receiving another kind of shot in the arm of confidence, or, or it, maybe it's better said Godfidence, because that's where our confidence lies, right? In the Lord. And if you stuck with this, or even if you just sit down to read through this short book from time to time, you might find yourself a little of confused or frustrated or ah, I'm not sure why he's saying those things. Because And here's why. Reading 1 John's a little like uh, listening to one side of a phone conversation. You, you, ever, you ever been in a room with someone who's on the phone talking to someone else and you only hear their side and, and maybe they're even arguing with the other person and, and so they're, you don't really know the gist of why they're saying what they're saying. All you hear is what they're saying. And that's kind of like when we read 1 John. John is arguing for the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but he's arguing in the face of this thing that would later become Gnosticism. Gnosticism, it's this, it's this weird thought that, that really salvation is, is really from knowledge. And John doesn't really say why he's saying the things he's saying. He just kind of blurts them out. He doesn't say, well, here's what I've been hearing. I've been hearing this weird teaching about such and such, and here's the truth. He doesn't say that. He just kind of comes out and makes these statements, and you might think, well, where did that come from? We write to make our joy complete. Cool. That's cool. To really ask why you wrote what you wrote, but that's, that's, that's cool. Anyone who claims to be in the light and hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Why are you talking about my sister? I don't, what? Now, don't you love the world or anything in this world? If anyone loves the world, love for the Father's not in them. I'm like, whoa, wait, what's wrong with the world? What's going on? And it may seem a little harsh, it may seem a little out of left field sometimes, but false teachings were being peddled among uh, Christ followers, and this Gnosticism taught that salvation came through knowledge. And that, I mean, that's really a boiled down explanation, but, but the more you knew, the more you were saved. Salvation wasn't through Jesus, it was through knowledge. So, so love the world. Love everything about the world. Learn as much as you can possibly learn about the world and, and, and put your faith in that knowledge and you will be winning. And John was like, whoa, no, 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 not on my watch. Uh-uh. I better write them a letter 
and tell them what's going on. And so he did. And that's 1 John. And the word from the Lord John has for us today comes just from two verses in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, and he simply writes this, everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Again, it's like a kind of a one-sided conversation and Okay, why are you saying this? And what's really cool about that is that could be a conversation uh, that with people facing uh, this false teaching of Gnosticism in the first century. But this conversation could also be one that you have with a skeptical workmate, or with an unbelieving spouse, or a person that's been devastated by pain and sickness and loss. It could be a conversation with, with a person in your pew today person in line for coffee, it could be a conversation you have with yourself. And it may sound something like this. How can anybody win? How can anyone win? The world's so messed up. I always feel like I'm losing. Oh, I take one step forward, but two or three back. I mean, everywhere I turn, there's wildfires, there's war, there's disease, there's devastation. Don't even get me started about traffic. It's beating me up every day on Route 1. Or the pressures at work, the tensions at home, the conversations at school, the turmoil in my own soul. I haven't had a good night's rest in days. It, it just seems like the evil in this world is always winning. And John hears this dialogue and he responds with the, these words, Hey, everyone born of God overcomes the world. And this isn't just some fluffy encouragement, hey man, it's going to be better, just keep your head up, that's cool. No, this, this is an apostle of Jesus whose words come straight from the Holy Spirit of God, making this declaration of truth, everyone born of God overcomes the world. A little word study might be helpful here, that word everyone means everyone. Everyone. But what John didn't say is that, hey, everyone's going to win. Everyone overcomes the world. He didn't say that, did he? There's a qualifier. Did you catch it? Everyone who is born of God, everyone who puts their full trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior, everyone who turns to him in repentance and is born of God through the waters of baptism, everyone saved by grace through faith in Jesus, every one of these folks overcomes the world. That word I wore my Nike shirt today because that's the word here. Don't think just do it. Think Nike, or in the Greek, the word is nikeo. Nikeo, and it means victory. It means conquer. It means win. It means overcome. It's used four times here in these, just these two verses. Overcome, conquer, win. It implies fighting a battle and winning. Everyone born of God wins, overcomes the world. The world here is the word cosmos. And really, this word could be, could be used three different ways, and it's really the context determines which way it is. Cosmos could be the world, it could be the planet that God created, the physical earth. It could be humanity, it could be the people that live and, and, and you know, take up space on this planet. Or it could be the way of the world, the system of the world, the ungodly, wicked, broken way of this world. I think that's what John's talking about here, the, the wicked ways of the world that are making you feel like you can't win, like you're losing. John says, no, Christian, everyone born of God wins, overcomes the ways of the world. Back to our conversation. Okay, John, that sounds good, but I don't feel like I'm winning. I mean, I've been trying so hard. I mean, I've been, I've been grinding, and I'm exhausted. It seems like the harder I try, the the, the more and the harder I fall. And, and it doesn't seem like, I don't see myself winning, John, and I can't escape the ways of the world, dude. I got bills to pay. I'll just keep grinding. I'll just keep putting my nose to the ground. I'll just keep working and working harder. I just, I just feel like, though, I'm spinning my wheels. I'm not getting anywhere. And John comes back and working harder, grinding all the time. This, this is the victory that overcame the world. Our faith. 
See, the Jesus following life isn't about trying harder. That's the way of the world. The way of the Jesus following life is faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. We overcome by faith, not by working harder and grinding longer. We we win by faith in the grace and the person of Jesus, not by climbing the ladder of success and achieving and, and gaining more things. Faith in the victory that has already been and continues to be won day after day by Jesus. We trust in his victory for our victory for everything. Sounds like a cop-out, John. Just don't want to put in the work, huh? Don't want to put in the work. You just create this make you feel better situation. And it's easy for you to say, John, like you've got a job and you've got a family and you've got, and John just kind of interrupts, puts his hand up. This is the common rant of excuses and comparisons. So dangerous. No one said it'll be easy. In fact, what John said and what he's talking about is hard. It's a battle. There's overcoming. There's fighting. There's scrapping. There's wrestling. Just not the way the world thinks. Our struggle isn't against flesh and blood. The Jesus followers struggle. The battle is spiritual. Paul said it's against the, the rulers and authorities and powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So John interrupts and says, whoa, 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 Christian, remember, focus, truth, verse 5. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Christianity is the most exclusive and inclusive reality there is all at the same time. It's exclusive. Victory is only found in Jesus. Only the one whose faith is in Jesus Christ overcomes. But inclusive, everyone can be born of God. Everyone can have this faith. Everyone is welcome. It's just, it's just kind of this chain reaction of sorts. There, there's no overcoming, no victory without faith in Jesus. Without faith in Jesus, you lose. With faith in Jesus, Every single person with faith in Jesus, without exception, has complete victory. And knowing this victory brings total confidence in everything the world can throw at us. This past Wednesday night at Refill, we learned from the Old Testament example of Caleb. Caleb in the Old Testament, we're, we're in a teaching series called Finishing Well, and, and Caleb shows us how to, how to finish faithfully. Caleb walked by faith like we're talking about. The story goes like this. God tells Moses, hey, I want you to send some guys into the promised land to kind of scope things out, see how it is. Are we, can we get over there? So 12 guys go over and 10 guys come back and they're like, man, the land is great. No chance we can go over there. There's giants over there. Imagine um, a town that everyone who lives there is Goliath because that's what it was and they were terrified. Land's great, but uh, we're not, there's no way we can go over there. Ain't no way we can go live there. Those people are way stronger than us. They're way bigger than us. They're more powerful than us. Their, their towns are protected and fortified. There's, there's just no way. And Caleb steps up and he silences the crowd, the Bible says. He's like, yeah, I think we should go. I, I think we should go and we should take possession of that land. We can certainly do it. That land is exceedingly great. Listen to his faith. He says, if the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into the land. He'll give it to us. Their protection is gone. The Lord is with us. Caleb had faith. Not in his own ability or their own ability, but in the Lord. He's with us. We will win. You see, faith isn't naive. There are difficulties. There are real hardships and and tragedies and devastating circumstances, and, and faith doesn't ignore them or act like they're not real. Nor does faith minimize those things. Faith puts things in proper perspective. Faith responds with, yeah, but Jesus, he overcame the world. And because of him, I can too. This isn't going to defeat me. Oh, I'm weak. Don't get me wrong. I am weak, but he is strong. And I'm with him. And with him, I win. We win. 
The truth is every person on planet earth needs to overcome. Jesus' followers aren't exempt. Uh, Jesus said to his followers, Cole read it earlier, John 16, 33, in this world you will have trouble. That word trouble isn't like your check engine light came on, you got to run by AutoZone. That word means pressure, like it's crushing. It means affliction. It means tribulation. It means persecution, trouble. But, Jesus says, take heart. (laughs) I've overcome this world. Paul told Timothy, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. You see, suffering... It's part of the Jesus following life. We don't like to talk about that so much. We don't like to think about that. It's not part of those conversations we have when we're leading people to Christ. Hey, it's going to be worse after. (laughs) But Jesus, he gives us victory. With him, we overcome. Back in 2007, Jerry Sitzer wrote a book called Water from a Deep Well. In it, he explores uh, Jesus' followers all throughout history, starting with the first followers all the way through modern-day missionaries today. And one of the people he wrote about was a woman named Vibia Perpetua. In the early 3rd century, the Roman emperor uh, Septimius Severus, I don't know what it is with Roman emperors, but they get the coolest names like ever in history, Septimius Severus. His coolness, though, stopped at his name because he established a policy that made it illegal to convert to Christianity. He forbade anyone from becoming a Christian. Vibia Perpetua was a young married mother to a newborn who was a faithful Jesus follower, and so when they found out about that, they threw her in prison, and and she knew straight away that the next season of life probably was going to be torture and her execution if she didn't renounce her faith. And so there were these court hearings, and I don't know how real they were, and of course her family was really upset and fuming. Her, her dad was quoted as saying, do not abandon me to the reproach of men. Think about your brothers, think of your mother and your aunt, think of your child who will not be able to live once you're gone. Give up your pride, he screamed. You're going to destroy all of us. Others just urged her to sacrifice to the emperor or... Um, sacrifice to the Roman gods to save herself. But she wouldn't. (laughs) She couldn't. She just kept saying, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And so the governor sentenced her to be thrown in with the beasts. What that means is she would be thrown in with other Christians into an arena uh, with lions and uh, leopards and wild boars, and she would have to fight for her life as a sport-like spectacle of entertainment for the Roman citizens. So when she got this news, uh, she returned to her prison cell in high spirits, like joyful And people took notice of this, and they began to show her and her Christian companions great honor, realizing, and I quote, they were possessed by, they possessed some great power within them. And this power was faith. Faith in the one who overcame this world. Sitzer wrote, Perpetua cared little about what she could lose, however severe the loss seemed to be. Instead, she fixed her eyes on heaven, which she considered a greater reality than life in this world. Just before her death, she wrote in her diary, she was thinking about you know, the arena scene, and she wrote in her diary, I realized I would, not be, I, I would be contending not with wild animals, but with the devil himself. I knew, however, listen, that I would win. You see, Perpetua was a Christian. She was a faithful follower of Jesus who knew the plight of many other Jesus followers before her. In fact, 1 John was written just 75 years before she lived. Maybe she she was part of this conversation. But her faith lied in the victory found only in Jesus, so she happily submitted to death for the sake of Christ. She saw it as a joy to be counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. She made a decision, listen, not, she didn't make a decision between life and death, but between Jesus and Rome. I'm a Christian. I choose Jesus. And friends, that's what it will always come down to. 
for you and for me. That's, that's what it comes down to. I am a Christian. I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus over myself. I choose Jesus over my doubt. I choose Jesus over fear. I choose Jesus over success, over my family. I'm a Christian. I choose Jesus. What about you? What is it today that has you suffering, that has you afraid? What, what is it that's a threat? What are the lies you're believing? What situation are you asking to be delivered from? Listen, what, what in the world has got you feeling like you can't win? Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Why? Because of what Jesus said in John 16, 33. He, Jesus said, I have overcome this world. So here's the thing. Because Jesus overcame this world, you can have confidence in this life. Because Jesus overcame this world, you can trust him when he says, hey, you don't have to, you can have victory. You don't have to keep trying harder. You don't have to keep grinding and working yourself to death. You can have victory in me. And because Jesus overcame the world, you can say like Paul, I actually boast in my weakness and struggle because that's when the power of Christ comes alive in me. And so let's end where we started do you feel like you're losing? Do you feel like you're losing? If so, you need victory, right? It requires faith in Jesus. He's the one who gives us victory. If you're here today and you have Jesus, you have victory, you need to start living like it, declaring in the face of every single difficulty that comes your way, I'm a Christian. I choose Jesus. If you don't have Jesus to provide victory for you, <laughs> you need Jesus. You need to lay your burdens down and choose faith and express that by repenting and being baptized to say, Jesus, I can't do it. I, the way that I've been doing things just isn't working. I, I give up. I, I want to win. I want to be born of God and live confident in, in your victory. I want to be a Christian. I choose Jesus. Because when it comes to things of eternity, when it comes to things of your eternity, winning is everything. And thanks be to God, he gives us that victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you. Father, we're grateful that Jesus achieved victory for us and that by grace he extends that to us that we can have life and have it to the fullest. That all of our failings, all of our shortcomings, all of our losses can be cleansed from us and forgotten about by you that we can stand and walk through the rest of this life in victory. Sometimes it's hard to believe that, Lord. Sometimes it doesn't feel like we're winning. And so I pray these few words from John in this little letter would remind us that as those born of God, we overcome. Truth is, we may not experience that victory the way we want to until eternity. But So would you give us faith? The faith that it takes to, to live life to the fullest with Jesus and following him wherever we go. May we always choose Jesus over everything else and live in victory. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.